intro to Nick and we'll let him take the stage and then we'll open up for questions from you guys later. We are hey, recording Mary, this. Mary, I'm, I'm here too, Mary. Hi, Ann. Mm -hmm. Hi. So Ian nice and Nick are both co-founders of Cutback Coach. And uh, we will be recording this. So if you guys want to turn off your videos while we're doing uh, uh, the question and answer, that's fine. Or else we're actually just going to save it for a speaker if we're going to try to just show the speaker because Christine's here and she knows how to do all that. But um, anyway, uh, the, the history of how MM got involved with Cutback Coach is that about a year ago or so, I believe, a few months, um, Nick joined our moderation management Facebook group. And uh, he started kind of just showing how he was keeping track on this really cool program that he was using, but it wasn't really available to anybody yet. It was one that he had designed. Well, our, our members were really interested in it. And uh, so when it became available, then, um, then I'm not sure how they knew, but some of them went to the website and they found it. And I just kept hearing a lot of great feedback from our members. And, um, you know, a lot of them have, you'll see on there that a lot of them use different apps, dry days and drink less. And there's a bunch of them out there. But we were getting a lot of good comments about Cutback Coach. So back in November, I contacted Ian and Nick and asked if they would be interested in sponsoring MM. And as I told them last week, I said, Jim, that's not something I do. I have never contacted any other apps to see if they wanted to be sponsors of MM. So that's kind of how our relationship partnership started. And so I thought we would just turn it over to you, Nick and Ian. And I I was thinking if you could just kind of tell us why you decided that you needed an app uh, and why you didn't feel like the ones that were already out there would work for you, why you went ahead and, and designed your own. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm really excited to be here and, um, and excited to interact with all of you in person. I think some of you have, I've I think I've seen um, in the Cutback Coach community and, and definitely on the moderation management side. So excited to, to put faces to names here. Um, a little bit about kind of my, my story and background um, that led up to Cutback Coach. Um, I grew up in a household with, with a family that was pretty deeply affected by alcoholism. Um, actually, both of my parents um, have, have been sober for, for more than 30 years, so for the vast majority of my life. Um, they gave me permission to share that. They, they actually did go the traditional AA route and, um, Nick, Nick, and Nick, hold on, Nick, hold on just a minute because I forgot that we are going to record this. If that's okay with you, for people that are not uh, not not able to attend this meeting, that's totally fine. That's, okay, all right, Christine, do you have re record on? I do. Okay, great, cool. Um, yeah, so so you know, generally speaking, you know, my my parents basically didn't drink for, for most of my life, and. And when it came, you know, to my high school years and, and when I started to kind of explore my own relationship with alcohol, um, rather than kind of pushing my parents' worldview on me, uh, you know, and, and really kind of encouraging me to be sober or, or to kind of, you know, avoid alcohol at all costs because, you know, of the experience that they had had, um, my parents instead really encouraged me to just be mindful about the kind of risk factors that our family has and the, about the role that alcohol ultimately plays in my, in my health and wellness. And so... Um, when I kind of started drinking early on and, you know, through my college days, definitely had found out quickly that I, you know, had the tendency to kind of overdo it here and there with alcohol and definitely um, had some of those same kind of relationship that my parents did with, with drinking. But what I think I had that my parents didn't have was, was being raised with this awareness and this sensibility about the danger that alcohol can have if left unchecked. And so what that meant for me over, you know, the 15 or so years of, of my own kind of drinking journey has been always trying to keep alcohol in its place in my overall health and really keep it front of mind so that, that it doesn't become a problem for me um, either now or in the future. And that's been a lot of different personal systems that's been uh, kind of trying to have this conversation with, with my friends and my social circles to really push this idea of kind of what I'm, you know, what we now call mindful drinking. I don't really know what it was, you know, 10 years ago, but the idea of just kind of like having having drinking in a, in a healthy place in, in, in our overall um, lives, you know, as, as much as is possible with, with alcohol being alcohol. Um, and most recently in about a year and a half ago, my wife and I actually uh, both left our jobs with the idea that we were gonna travel a little bit and kind of take a, take a break. Um, and what we found in our, you know, early days of travel and we, we didn't have nine to five jobs, we didn't have nearly as much structure as we were used to 
Um, and we traveled for about a month. And what we found is that basically we were kind of like drinking like we were in vacation mode, but for an extended period of time and that our trip was, was longer than we were used to. And alcohol just kind of started to feel a little bit more out of balance and kind of out of place with the role that we wanted it to have in our lives. And so I designed the cutback coach system. I'm, I'm a big kind of behavioral psychology person and I've, I've been, you know, used a number of different apps for managing my diet and my exercise and other areas of my health. And so I, I actually kind of turned to technology as an opportunity to help just kind of level set and reset the role that alcohol played in our travel experience and ultimately in our, in our overall lives. Um, this was not a point in our in time in our lives that we were feeling like, you know, alcohol was causing our lives to totally spiral out of control. We weren't in a mindset of, you know, we need to cut this out and quit entirely. But we definitely did feel like um, there was an opportunity for us to um, be more mindful and intentional about when and how much we were drinking. And that was kind of the frame with which I started to think about, you know, this challenge and kind of how to, how to design a system to help us. And what I found when I looked at a lot of the existing apps and services in the market today is that the vast majority of them are designed and branded and totally developed with this kind of all or nothing, you know, sobriety mindset in mind. So you've got apps with names like Sober Buddy and Dry Days and Quit That and I Am Sober. And not to say that those are, are bad. I have a ton of respect for folks who make the decision to try and cut out alcohol entirely. But for me, you know, I, I enjoy drinking and I didn't really want to quit. But that didn't mean that I didn't feel like I needed a little bit of extra help and, you know, a nudge in the right direction here and there to keep alcohol in, in its proper place in, in my life. Um, and so when I found that there was kind of very little out there to serve, you know, the, the drinker like me, the person who, you know, didn't want to quit entirely, enjoyed drinking and um, just wanted to kind of be more mindful and moderate, um, there wasn't much out there. I, I just didn't find a service that really stuck with me. I, I virtually tried them all. And you know, for some reason or another, they just didn't quite click with what I was looking for. There were a lot of the like big red X's every time you have a drink, which was like not what I wanted to feel. I didn't want to feel guilty. And there were, um, you know, or there were like really hands off experiences where it was like you tracked, but there was no structure. And it was kind of like, okay, you know, not, not actually helping me to make a change. And so Cutback Coach, I basically, the, you know, the system design is, is rooted in behavioral psychology. And it's, it's rooted in the idea that it's about more than measurement. It's also about planning ahead and about kind of creating intentionality within, within our relationship with drinking in order to achieve kind of larger goals and, um, you know, basically unlock the potential of healthier drinking for things like improving our sleep quality and helping us accelerate our diet and weight loss journey and um, generally waking up feeling more productive and a little less cloudy. Um, and those are the reasons that I really set out to change my drinking. Um, you know, to unlock those other kind of ancillary benefits of, of, you know, drinking more mindfully. And so that's kind of, you know, what led me to the, to the journey to building Cutback Coach was, you know, really scratching my own itch and, and realizing that there just wasn't something out there that, that served my kind of specific needs. And, and I had an inkling that I, I wasn't alone. And finding the moderation management community was really, I was really early on in, in my exploration of this project. And it was really good validation for me to understand, like, in fact, I am not alone and that there are a lot of folks like you and like many others in the community who are trying to find this middle path and have not been served up to this point by the, this kind of like false binary of like the problem drinker who needs to quit entirely or like everyone else who's totally healthy. There's very clearly and, and you know, uncontroversially a, a middle ground and a, a group of people um, who, who fall right, who fall squarely in the middle, who don't wanna quit, don't feel the need to quit and yet who are also not, you know, 100% healthy and have their habits completely uh, where they want them to be. Um, so, so that's kind of, you know, the, the backstory on, on Cutback Coach. Um, and Mary, I can talk a little bit more about the program design, like what, what would be helpful from, uh, from here? Yeah, I think, you, yeah, if you want to show the uh, program design kind of like we did the other night, uh, but also, you know, I have a quick question while I'm thinking about it. Now, do you have like, uh, do you, steer people or or encourage them toward a certain limit for men or do you just let them set their own limits uh, where they want to be yeah it's a great question so, so there are guidelines that are set out by the national institutes of health for um kind of what's considered moderate consumption in the in the scientific terminology and and that's generally 14 drinks or fewer a week for men and no more than four drinks in a two-hour period and for women it's a little bit lower it's, it's no more than eight drinks a week 
or two or more in a four hour period. And so that's kind of the, the frame with which we start from. But for a lot of people that, that doesn't feel realistic, you know, if you're coming in more like in that like 40 plus drinks a week range, um, you know, us telling you that you should be drinking eight or that you should be drinking 14 drinks is maybe not that helpful right off the bat. And so what we try to do is we actually try to meet you where you are with the program and develop a plan that kind of starts from your starting point and gradually helps you to taper down. Again, with, with no feeling of guilt or no feeling like you're falling behind if you don't hit your plan here or there. We, we really try to be non-judgmental and we try to be um, you know, friendly and approachable and 100% and positive so that if you don't hit your plan for a week, you know, we're here to help you pick back up and start again for the new week rather than you know, any kind of like punitive making you feel bad about yourself or making you feel like you're failing. And I think that's a really important part of this journey is there is no failure as long as you're trying. And if you're putting the effort in and making the pro and, and, and continuing to focus and to, to build this mindfulness, we're all gonna have ups and downs, but you're still making progress. Even those down weeks, if you use them as an opportunity to reflect and to look back and to say, hey, these are actually some of the triggers that caused me to go a little bit off track of my plan. Or, you know, it was the Super Bowl on Sunday really screwed up my week. These are things that are, are important to realize and recognize when you're kind of reflecting not to feel bad about yourself, but rather to apply those principles and lessons towards your forward-looking effort to, to continue to improve. So I'm a big fan of, of James Clear, and you know he wrote a book called Atomic Habits, which I really highly recommend, but he just talks about 1% better every day, just doing your best to be slightly, just a little bit better each, each and every day. And what that means over time is that that impact compounds exponentially, and it makes a huge, huge difference. And so you know we're here to help you not give up because as long as you're trying, even if you're having ups and downs, you know, you're moving in the right direction and you're making a real concerted effort to self-improve, which is what it's all about. And I swear I didn't tell him what to say tonight because <laughs> you're just basically <laughs> repeating it, what I've been saying for the last week on our, on our Kickstart group. But hey, yeah, if you want to go ahead and show, oh, go ahead, Christine. Yeah, if you don't mind, I'd love to chime in. Um, not that you guys need validation with your app, but one of my biggest fears coming into moderation management and coming in, like just leaving the Kickstart program was planning. I have this problem, not even problem. I just have this cork where I have a fear of planning. And so I feel mm -hmm. like if I plan, I set myself up for failure. And I can totally confirm that what Nick said, that the app helps you plan without making you feel guilty is a 100% true. There have been times where I've messaged them back and I've been like, I don't wanna plan. I don't wanna do the same plan as last week. I feel like if I'm planning, I'm setting myself up for failure. If I have one slip, it means that I failed. And the app really holds true that it doesn't make you feel guilty. Like he said, like there's no big red X. You don't get a little red circle until it's like, you know, so I, I just want to confirm what Nick said that like the app does do a really good job of not making you feel guilty, still helping you plan and maintaining that balance. It's been really helpful for me. That's so cool to hear. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that it's working for you, Christine. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Back to you, Mary. I cut you off. Okay. No, that's all right. I, Nick, if you just want to show some of the features of the of the app for those who haven't been on your site yet. Yeah, definitely. So I can kind of walk you quickly through, you know, what our website looks like. And uh, hold on, let me just pull up a, a fresh tab because I've got hundreds <laughs> of tabs open. So let me just clean it up. I have the same problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I can show the, the website and then I'll, I'll walk through a little bit of kind of how the program works. Um, so we'll do this. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Yep. Cool. Um, so the Cutback Coach program is I would like to think kind of radically simple in, in terms of how we, how we work. Um, if you're interested in getting started, um, you can visit us at cutbackcoach.com. And what we do is we take every new member through a roughly a five minute diagnostic assessment where we ask you a little bit about kind of your high level goals for wanting to change your drinking. Uh, we try to get an understanding of your baseline habits, again, in a very non-judgmental way, just want to kind of see where you're at. And then we also dig in a little bit about kind of the goals that you have specifically when it comes to changing your drinking. For some people, there are specific goals around reducing the frequency with which you drink. So maybe fewer days of the week. For others, it's a little bit more about, you know, you know you're fine during the week, but it's about kind of stopping those binge, binge sessions on the weekends that you end up regretting. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to just really understand your context so that we can design a program that meets you exactly where you are and really helps you to accomplish your specific goals. 
So a lot of the system is automated, but we, we take those signals into account in order to generate a plan that really feels like it's gonna be a good fit for you. And then it's gonna kind of taper down at the pace that, that you feel comfortable with. Um, from there, basically the, the program is, is you know, pretty straightforward. So we run through all of our members through a process each week on Sundays, where we generally recommend targets for you based on your starting point, based on your previous few weeks of actual drinking you know, patterns. We try to recommend a, a, a schedule that's um, you know, basically fitted to the patterns that you've shown over the last few weeks, but also kind of helping you to increment down if you're, if you're a little bit higher than, you know, than the goals that you've set out to achieve. Um, this planning process is incredibly important. And so it may feel like a little bit of a chore. It may feel like overly structured. And a lot of people tell us like, I don't know what I'm gonna, where I'm gonna be next Sunday. Like, I don't know what target I wanna set. And that's okay. We provide flexibility for allow you to, to allow you to change the plan midweek if, if your plans change. But what's really important about this process is it creates accountability upfront and it helps you to make, make seven decisions at once versus having the anxiety of every single day, having to decide, Am I going to drink today? Yes or no? And how much am I going to drink if I am going to drink? And so by consolidating all of those decisions into one point, generally on Sundays when folks are feeling a little bit you know, higher willpower, they're preparing for the week ahead, uh, and they're not kind of having the craving in that exact moment, such that it's you know, easier to make an objective decision about like, what is it that you really want to achieve for the week ahead? And so with this planning process and with this kind of simple accountability roadmap, we basically gives ourselves a tool to work together over the course of the week. So now when it comes to that Monday or that Tuesday, we can engage with you and, and we engage with you via text message, which I think is, is another part of the story, which is, is pretty different from other apps. And I think makes it a lot easier to get started with us. But we can send you a text on Monday that says, hey, your intention for today was to stay dry. We're not telling you to stay dry. We're just reminding you that you told yourself that you wanted to have today be a dry day. And that's a really powerful kind of personal uh, reflection prompt that we, can, that we can push to you, which is again, like not us trying to force you into a specific decision, but just helping you to remember that, you know, when you were in a clear state, when you weren't feeling the craving, when you didn't have that hard day of, of work beforehand, this was the intention that you set for yourself. And I think that's the really important thing about, about the planning process is it's not about, um, you know, it, it, it helps you that if you have had that rough, that rough Monday at work, or you, you know, generally just had a stressful day with the kids uh, or, or what have you, and it feels like it would be a great day to drink, you from the past can kind of remind you about what you wanted for yourself for future you, right? And I think that's, that's a really powerful reason to plan ahead, even if it doesn't always feel like um, you know, it perfectly fits the way that you think about your week or, um, or you're not exactly sure what the week's gonna look like, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, et cetera. So th that's why the, the planning process is so important. Once you've made your plan, then we work with you on a daily basis via text message to, again, remind you about the intention that you set for yourself um, and also to just kind of give you nudges in the right direction. So on those dry days, when you're feeling the cravings, you can text us and we'll be there to, to help. On the drinking days, we really try to focus on, on helping you stay within your targets and avoiding those kind of big, you know, those last few drinks at the end of the, those drinking nights that really don't add a lot of value and generally make you feel worse the next day and, and really kind of drive the regret. So we're not about telling you you shouldn't drink at all, but we are about helping you to be mindful and intentional so that you cut out the ones that you don't really want or need at the end of a night, for example, when you know they really just contribute to rough feelings the next morning. Um, I think this is a pretty fun part of the process. So we, we encourage our members to track each drink by sending us a text as soon as they have it. This is a little bit of a subtle thing, but from a behavioral psychology standpoint, what we try to encourage folks to do is take a pause between every drink and stretch those pauses as long as they can, right? And so the first action is that you take out your phone and you send us a text message to let us know that you finished the drink. Um, and then from there, we try to kind of build on top of that habit, you know, different behaviors around really intentionally asking yourself if you want or need the next one. And a lot of folks tell us like, well, yes, I do want the next one and that's okay. But what's important is that you've actually created a pause to ask yourself the question and you take what is normally an automated routine for a lot of people, which is like, I finish one glass of wine and then I start the next one. And it inserts a pause where you can actually ask yourself the question, do I really want it? And if the answer is yes, that's great. We're not gonna stop you. We're not gonna make you feel guilty about that. But oftentimes you'll be surprised that, you know, when you sit in that feeling for a little bit and when you stretch that pause a little bit further, you actually realize that deep down your body or your mind is kind of, in, you know, uh, suggesting that maybe the answer is in fact, no. 
And, and as you hone this, this muscle around tracking, that answer becomes more obvious and it becomes easier, I think, over time to, to pull back and to, to cut those ones out that you don't really want. And then the process is really forgiving and self-reflective and it's about iterating each, each week to get towards your goals. So we work with you every week when you close out the week, which actually happens on Mondays, to help you reflect really briefly on like, if you were on target, what were the things that went well this week that helped you keep on target? And if you were a little bit off or you were a lot off, that's also okay. It's not about making you feel bad. It's more about trying to identify what were one of the two of the things that happened in the week that kind of pushed things sideways. And how can we better prepare for those things for the week ahead so that when they happen again, you're ready for them and you're, and you're more prepared. So this is, again, it's, it's pretty deeply rooted in behavioral psychology, but it's, it's about improving 1% every day by learning from your own mistakes and from your own successes so that those things kind of compound week to week and you build new muscles that you didn't know you, you had. Um, and so generally that's, that's kind of the, the way that the cutback coach system works. Um, if you're interested, you can take a little bit, read a little bit more about my story on the website as well. I wrote a little bit of just kind of how I got here and, and you know, why. Um, but I would, I would love if anyone's interested in checking out the, the product to, to work with any of you. And I'm happy right. to answer any questions for the next, uh, next few minutes as well. Uh, we got one over here. It's actually from Christine. She can ask it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so excited about this app. I love it so much. I think I've personally referred like 30 people. I don't even know if they've That's been amazing. in moderation management. I'm just like, you guys should check out this app. Um, so my question is what went into making this business plan and this app a reality? How did you do that? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. So um, I've always been kind of pretty entrepreneurial in spirit and I had a little bit of a background of actually in like marketing automation. So I did a lot of work in text messages and then kind of like email and stuff in, in my career up to this point. And so as I was kind of contemplating the system, I found a couple studies that were pretty interesting that were um, specifically about how text message interventions can have been proven to really help with tobacco cessation. And there's some active studies going around text message interventions for um, healthier drinking habits. And so that was something that really was you know, I found really compelling and I wanted to build something that was a little bit different from a lot of the other apps that you see in the market today, which like the app itself became really hard for me to, to use for some of the other apps that I tried of like remembering to go and find the app on the third page of my home screen and, um, and making sure that I was, you know, tracking each one and, and I just couldn't attach to a lot of them. And so the, the text message thing was, was one thing that was really interesting and felt like kind of a novel idea as I was contemplating how to build this thing. And so that was, that definitely went into like, you know, can we build a differentiated product in this space? And, and that felt like um, an area that we could do really uniquely well that, that nobody else had done before. Um, and then in terms of kind of like the business planning side of things, you know, my goal is really to help anyone who drinks to build a healthier relationship with alcohol. And so I, I, it was really important to me to not make the price kind of cost prohibitive. Um, and so from an early day at kind of days, I, I was really thinking about how to how to make this an approachable product that didn't feel like you were going to therapy. And therapy is like really expensive and you know, it's hundred bucks a month, et cetera. And I actually thought that by, by pricing this thing a lot lower and more in line with like Calm or Headspace or you know, Noom, that that would actually allow us to open this category up to more people. Um, and so you know, we, we currently price at $9 a month if you go with the annual plan or $6.50 a month if you go with the, with that, or sorry, $9 if you go monthly and six fifty dollars if you go with the annual plan. And so it comes out to roughly the cost of one or two drinks, depending on if you live in San Francisco, like me, it's like less than one drink. If you, if you live elsewhere, it's, it's like maybe two drinks, but we wanted to really, to really price it in a way that like, you know, we know we're going to pay it back by helping you cut those drinks out. And so, it, you know, that was a really key part of, of the business model part is, you know, pricing it such that, you know, anyone who is interested in, in changing their drinking could, could participate without that, that being a bit entry. So you've got a question over here from Julie that says, uh, can they see their numbers and how do they see their numbers progress over weeks and months? Yeah, it's a great question. So this is an area that we're, we're really actively investing in from a product standpoint. Um, today, we send a weekly email every Monday where we summarize your long-term stats. We show your progress over time. And then we actually show what that means for you in the context of your health and wellness, as well as kind of lifestyle benefits. So we show you like the incremental dry days that, you, that you've added and what that means for your sleep. We show you the total drinks that you've saved and what that means for your wallet. 
and for your calorie intake. And so we try to contextualize the changes that you're making, not just in like a number of fewer drinks per week, but also in kind of what it means for your overall health and wellness. And I think that's a really important part um, of the experience um, because it's about, it's about wellness improvement versus fixing your drinking for a lot of people that are, that are using Cutback Coach. Um, and, and, but there's a lot more to come there. That, that's probably our number one priority from the, for the product is how do we make those stats and insights more and more actionable over time and more personalized to you. So we have this vision of a world where like, we know the exact number of drinks that when you have the next one, it's gonna affect your performance the next day. And we can really personally intervene and share insights with you of like, hey, you're on drink number four, this is a great time to stop because drink number five is when Saturday is gonna become you know, a rough day for you. And so that's the type of level of insight that we wanna turn your tracking data into something that's really meaningful and actionable um, in terms of recommendations. Thank you so much, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so Nick, you were talking earlier about that you decided to go with text rather than just, you know, numbers out there and, and hear you. And I know there's been a lot of studies basically really focused on the texting and that it has shown that just short text can be just as uh, effective sometimes as, you know, an hour long therapy session. I know you guys have probably looked into those studies and I don't have the numbers right there. But uh, so I just wanted to point out that, you know, some people are saying, well, it's not really an app, it's a text thing. But uh, is that something you considered also when you designed this, that it would be a little at the effectiveness of texting versus just having the numbers out there? Yeah, totally. I mean, we, people still refer to us in that, as an app all the time, even though we're not technically an app, uh, at least not in the app store sense of, of the word. Um, but yeah, I think text messages, what we really like about text is that it's, you know, rather than having to build a new habit around learning how to use the app before you start actually making habits to change or making progress to change your drinking, like everyone knows how to send a text message. And so engaging with us is as simple as sending a text to a friend. And I think that was a really core piece of what we wanted to build early on was this idea of kind of like an experience that feels human and that feels like you're interacting with a real person, which you are a lot of the time with Cutback Coach. Um, and text message felt like a really natural uh, kind of platform and surface for us to, to do that in. Um, and then the other like really great thing about text messages is, you know, you're already checking your text message tens, if not hundreds of times a day. And so we can kind of piggyback on an existing habit that you already have, which is texting and use that ingrained habit to basically do what's called habit stacking. So we can stack your healthier drinking habits on an existing habit that you have, which is sending text messages. And that's a really powerful idea, which is basically like, if you know how to text, you know how to use our service. And those texts end up um, being something that you're already looking at a bunch of times a day, right? So we're not creating like incremental kind of headspace that we have to take up to remember to track because it's already kind of right there, right there in the place that you're already interacting on your phone, basically. So Christine has another question, but uh, uh, privacy issues. Some people are afraid to use apps on social media or social media. For privacy sense, can you touch on the privacy of using text-based apps rather than other programs? Yeah, definitely. So um, I would, I, first of all, I would, would point you to our, our privacy policy. It's probably the best place to see kind of our, our full robust policies there. Um, in general, though, you know, we, we take data privacy and kind of data security very seriously. Um, we obviously know that this is a pretty sensitive subject for a lot of people. We're trying to push it you know, more into the mainstream. We want people to be talking about this more, more openly. But for now, we understand that it's sensitive, a sensitive subject and, and we take your data privacy very seriously. Um, you know, outside of kind of standard industry sharing of like anonymized data for things like advertising, et cetera, which, you know, would never be linked back to our individual user profiles or accounts. Um, we would never share your data or sell your data or anything along those lines um, in a non-anonymized non -anonym, non -anonym, way. And then the only other thing that I think we would use the data for that's a little bit more public facing would be for research. Um, you know, we could see a world in the future where we have a really unique insight into, you know, how folks drinking habits change and, and um, you know, how our, our kind of work can, can help to change those habits. And so there is a world where we would, you know, aggregate data and, and share it again in, a, in an anonymized way to advance research and help more people um, in general kind of build healthier habits and, and better understand how we as a society engage, you know, with alcohol. Um, so other than that, you know, we, we, we would never share your data, uh, you know, in a, in a way that's not fully anonymized and, and we take it really seriously and we, and we know it's a burden that we hold. 
because this information is so sensitive. That's good to know. So um, is it available in the app stores? Not in the app store. So the, the place to find us is cutbackcoach.com um, or you can just Google us, Cutback Coach, and, and you'll see us there. Um, but going straight to the website is probably the best thing to do. And you can check out some reviews of other folks who have, who have used us. We've got a lot of really exciting and awesome reviews. I think it, it helps, it gets us up every day to kind of see the customer love that comes in from our text message channels and, and the different review sites. Um, and I would, you know, I think that reading through those, you can get a good sense of the type of impact that the program is having. And that's, that's what we're really here for is to build something that works um, and that fits the lifestyle of folks that are looking to moderate rather than to kind of abstain completely. So just to put my my two cents in here, I would like you guys all, if you're going to go and uh, uh, try out Cutback Coach, to use either the link that we have on the Kickstart advertising or on our website, because that way it shows our sponsors. It kind of, it, it counts how many they get from our site. So if you can, if not, just at least let them know that you came from moderation management so they can say, Hey, you know, this is sponsorship was worth it. <laughs> we, we already feel like it's unbelievably worth it. So you don't have to worry okay. about that, Mary, but, right. uh, but yeah, it's, it's a great call. We, we would actually love it if you'd go through the, the moderation uh, site as well. Right. Um, and, and yeah, really excited to, to get to know all of you. Okay. So got one about the robot response versus human response. When will people get a human response? When do they get a human yeah. response? It's a great question. So, so basically the core of the system around creating your plan each week and tracking your drinks is mostly automated. So the, the bulk of the messages that you're sending back and forth with us, you're gonna get an automated response back. But as soon as you send a message like, hey, I'm having a craving, I'm not sure you know, what to do, or I set out to be dry, but it's, it was a really hard day, like kind of what should I do? You know, any message that you're asking a question, that you're asking for tips, support, encouragement, those go straight to our real human team. And we try to respond as quickly as we can to those. We're, we're a pretty small team. So here and there, the responses can, can you know, not won't be immediately in real time, but we do do our best to uh, respond as quickly as possible. And that's something that's really important to us. So you'll know when you're interacting with a human versus when you're interacting with a bot. Uh, we don't try to like play games where we, you know, try to fake being a human via the bot. But like, obviously <laughs> we've all had this like chat bot experiences that really quickly and clearly are not a real person. Um, we are we are human on the other end when you ask us questions, and um, and I think you'll feel that as part of the experience. So, and it's like me and Ian a bunch of the time, so you'll you'll actually be texting with us quite a bit, <laughs> at least for now. <laughs> that's a good thing. So, and I, you know, I've had a lot of good comments from members since you guys are kind of early start now, and uh, uh, that that they've said written you and and offered suggestions, and you guys have been very open to some of those suggestions and implemented them. We, so. love, we love the feedback. I mean, we are so early that your feedback is, is it's gold for us. It, it really, really makes a huge difference. So we love, we love interacting with, with our customers and our members. It's, it's incredibly fulfilling and, you know, the exchanges are really rich and, and meaningful and just really nice. Yeah. So what is a that? What, what is a nudge? What happens? What triggers a nudge? And, you know, how does that look like? Somebody's asking. Yeah, so again, um, this is an area that we currently do, again, via the human touch. So a lot of, you know, we have kind of prompts without in the experience where you can ask us, you know, need a nudge, just kind of text us and we'll, and we'll be there to provide some kind of encouragement. That's actually something that folks tend to really need in like really close to real time. So it's an area that we're thinking about potentially automating where you could just send us the word nudge and we could respond with kind of, you know, a piece of motivational or encouragement based on your plan for the day. Um, today, though, if you text nudge, we've got, again, real people there that will go and look at your plan and your, your intention for the day. And we'll just kind of help you and remind you about the, you know, the mindset that you're in when you set that plan for yourself and just kind of help to, to push you in the right direction. Again, we're not here to shove you. We're not here if you're like really had a bad day and you've like kind of decided that wine is the thing that you want to do. Like, we're not going to make you feel bad about that, but we are going to kind of help you put you put you in the mindset of where you were when you made the plan in the first place. And for a lot of people, that's enough to say like, hey, actually, maybe I don't need it today. Maybe I can have a hot cup of tea instead or go on a walk. And, um, and you know, we see that all the time that folks kind of are able to talk themselves down from, from, uh, from I think, decisions that maybe they, they weren't feeling that great about. So I think you can see the questions too. But have you considered using some of Kickstart MM tools for your nudges? Well, I haven't shared all our tools with <laughs> Nick and Ian, but I could do that. Um, 
you know, we use a lot of the same things you guys do delay, drink it. Why don't you have a glass of water in between? Uh, you know, mm-hmm. so, uh, you know, as more and more as I talk to Nick and Ian and I'll have to, I'll be honest, I don't use, the, I don't use the, the cutback coach. Um, uh, so I've learned a lot as we've gone through these discussions and, uh, uh, it's, it's amazing because as I told them the other day, I said, you know, if I was going to design a, a uh, an app for MM, this would have been it because they do use so many of the same tactics that we use. So uh, uh, we can always get together and exchange tools at some point if you want to. I'm always thinking up new ones and I'm sure you guys have, have some new ones, some I could use also, so. Yeah, uh, and then the second area that we're focusing is kind of expanding the toolkit. So I would love to, to have that conversation, Mary. That sounds super interesting. Good idea, Christine. I brought that up because I'm selfish and sometimes I think that (laughs) this text-based app is just so helpful because again when you're out with friends even when I'm just like watching a movie I don't want to pull up an app I don't want to learn the app Mm -hmm. I just want to text someone who can take care of it for me and so I do think that in response like if I'm like hey I need that nudge I need that support Nick and Ian have done a great job responding to me using humans as opposed to robots. But I do think it'd be nice to have a little tip like, oh, have you thought about delaying? Have you thought about water in between? Are you actually measuring mm-hmm. your drinks? That kind of thing. So I think it would be awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. But I love without it. being intrusive, you know, you and I, we all talked <laughs> the other day. I said, you know, uh, the thing that we have struggled with sometimes is that we always hear that afterwards. You know, we don't have our members coming on and I didn't either when I was at struggling. I didn't come on when I knew I was going to go overboard. I didn't want somebody talking me out of that drink. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, you try to do the nudges without all of a sudden becoming intrusive. And at some point you just got to, you, you guys said, you just got to pull back and, and yeah. let people do what they're going to do. And so. Uh, uh, and that's what we, we really kind of wait. We, we wait on our members to tell us when they need it, right? Like we're not proactively pushing you. It's more like you tell us like, hey, I, I could use a little nudge in the right direction. And that's when we'll intervene versus kind of, you know, unsolicited nudges, which I think could get a little frustrating for folks. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great idea. So uh, does anybody that in here that has used Cutback Coach have any recommendations for Alan? Or, I mean, I'm sorry, Alan, Nick or Ian? <laughs> okay, I'm coming up. So any more questions? Hey, Mary, I just wanted to take a moment and uh, okay. chime, chime in as well. Um, I, I'm just uh, really happy to be here amongst uh, the moderation community. Um, I, uh, I don't want to get too much into this, but I, too, uh, have had a family deeply impacted by alcohol. And it was sort of serendipitous when Nick approached me about working on this project together that uh, I would get an opportunity to help him out uh, was something that's so important to me and has impacted my family. So it's just really great to see you support us and to see the community here. So yeah, I couldn't be happier. All right, well, thank you both for being here. And if I get any questions sent to me uh, tomorrow or later on, I will definitely send them on to you guys. And um, I'm gonna say just thanks for being here for us. And thank you for designing Cutback Coach. <laughs> You're very welcome, and and thank you so much for for having us. It was was really great to to be here. All right. Thank you for your time. Bye, everyone. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys.